The co-op supermarket who do an excellent line in shortbread biscuits have called on police forces to do more after experiencing 175,000 crime incidents from January to June this year. According to the Express newspaper, the company have revealed that almost 1,000 incidents are reported every single day in their shops across the country, with one London store being looted three times in a single day. Some of these incidents include theft, staff abuse and antisocial behaviour, with some staff experiencing physical assaults. I know that in my local co-op, steaks are kept in secure plastic boxes to be unlocked at the till, and bottles of aerial detergent are now tagged. Who steals aerial? They must be very clean criminals and smell good too. This is part of a wider picture that points to an increasingly lawless Britain. In total, across England and Wales, there were 312,000 reported crimes last year and an overall charge rate of less than 6%. Sexual violence and fraud are through the roof and police have failed to solve a single burglary in neighbourhoods across nearly half of England and Wales in the past three years, rendering this horrific and intrusive offence of burglary to be effectively decriminalised. Often now, you're lucky if you even get a visit from a copper after a burglary. And even if you do, what's the point? And people only report vehicle crime, like car theft, for insurance purposes, having long ago given up hope of ever actually seeing their car or motorbike again. And if you own a bicycle, forget it. We may as well give them away to criminals for free. Now, as with the NHS, where problems exist with the system, but not the excellent doctors and nurses, the same goes for our police forces. Male and female coppers work very hard and they put their safety on the line every day on our behalf. They've had a torrid time during the pandemic enforcing ridiculous rules. And unlike other public sector workers, they can't go on strike, even though they are highly deserving of a pay rise after years and years of austerity. I back our cops. But sadly, our great cities are going the way of San Francisco or Seattle, where socialist policies have seen people able to steal items from shops under the value of $1,000 and not even get prosecuted. Security guards at Apple stores in America literally watch criminals walk out of the shop with an iPad under their arm. Many of America's major cities are a lawless apocalypse with regular looting and people openly drug taking and even defecating on the streets. Thankfully, we're not there yet, but like so many things in America, it's a stark warning of where we are headed. Whether it's graffiti, broken windows, or nicking a packet of minstrels from WH Smith, the policing culture in this country needs to change. And there needs to be a zero tolerance attitude towards all crime, starting with so-called low-level offences, which anyone with half a brain will tell you is a stepping stone to more serious crimes further down the line. It's human nature. If you don't think you're going to get caught, you will commit a crime. And it doesn't help that our police forces focus their energies on turning up at people's houses for an offensive Facebook post. It doesn't help that police forces spend half their time painting rainbow flags on cop cars. It doesn't help that they ask Just Stop Oil protesters glued to the motorway whether they're OK and whether they'd like a sandwich or a cup of tea. At the moment, criminals are in the driving seats and are making Britain a more dangerous and unhappy place to live. Keeping law and order on the streets is the primary responsibility of any government, and this one is failing. Criminals should be afraid to break the law, as they are in countries like Singapore, where they have an enviably low crime rate. Drug offences there, for example, are no go. Criminals aren't afraid at all in this country. They are laughing in our face. So how do we fix this? Well, employ more cops, build more prisons, toughen up sentencing, make custodial sentences productive, invest in prisoners to turn their life around and get rid of woke policing. It's time to tackle this national emergency before it becomes a full-blown national crisis. The police are losing control of the streets and you don't have to be a detective to work that out.